Yo guys, what is going on and welcome back to another episode in the Football Manager Save. It's episode number 17. Instead of returning with Burnley at home and high-flying Arsenal away. And before we get to the game, I'm just going to show you Fulham be getting on off camera. Yep. And after quite a flat episode in the season opener, let's up the energy today, shall we? Come on, Doc, get excited! Um, so, right before we get to the schedule, just real briefly, a couple of things to show you. Uh, obviously, transfer window's just closed. We now start off September. Uh, we loaned out one of our young goalkeepers. He last year was backup to uh, Marek Rodak, and I bought in a more established backup goalkeeper. But always believe in Carl Darlo uh, from the Magpies. Obviously, relegated last season. We picked him up on a cheat for 2.3 mil. He's 31 years old. He's literally literally just here for cover uh, and despite the horrendous red arrows which I'm having a real problem with in this year's FM I don't really know why because again my coaching uh, staff is is really good uh, above average in every single department uh, and, and very close to being the best if not the best in others as well training facilities are good but for some reason players just aren't developing as well as they used to in previous FMs but anyway Dala comes in uh, gets a two year deal it's only 13 grand a week as well again because the fee was so small it's a very low risk signing and um, yeah, nothing really to worry about there. Just a better backup goalkeeper in case Marek Rodak goes down. Now in terms of what's been going on off camera, as you can see a decent run off camera. We did lose our last two games on the back of the one one draw home to Swansea in the season opener. Uh, we won the following game away at Ashton Gate against newly promoted Bristol City. Troy Parrott on loan from Spurs gave him the lead, but... Caballero uh, right for the break got us back on level terms and there was a minute to go. Oh, I tell ya, I can't wait to show you what's been going on this guy. Patrick Bamford bangs in the game winner in his first start for the club and gives us the victory there against the newly promoted side. Uh, following that, a penalty shootout victory against Leighton Orient in the Carabao Cup, so our blushes were spared there on the spot kicks. And then a 1-1 draw at home to Southampton. Bamford once again, 2-2 two two for Patrick, uh, former Gregory equalizer, 10 minutes to go in a 1-1 one, one draw. Uh, following that, a 3-2 uh, sorry, 3 two win away at Selhurst Park. And I tell you what, how we lost this game. I would have been absolutely livid. We had two disallowed goals. Bamford put both of them in, but they were both disallowed through the VAR for offside. And it was just so frustrating, man. It's a hard game to lead. Uh, Re put us back on level terms. Ize put Palace back in front. And 17 minutes to go, Bamford shook off those two disallowed goals. Shushed a referee uh, as he made it 2 2. It was third in three. And there were five minutes to go. A bit of a howler from Tyrick Mitchell uh, allowed Antonio Knockout to run through one on one and slot in the game winner. Had we not won that, I would have been absolutely livid and written a particular to my MP to ban VAR. Uh, following that, 2-1 loss at home to Leicester. First defeat of the season. So frustrating, but we're, we've got a common theme in this save of conceding late goals against the bigger teams in the division. It continued in this game. Uh, TD Man score from the spot. Bamford once again. 4-4 four four for Patrick. Man's been on fire. And then in stoppage time, heartbreak not for the first time and it won't be the last. Jamie Vardy turns in a deflected cross in a 2-1 loss. And our last game off can I won't show you the goal, sir. Carabao Cup third round, threw up a back outside, threw up a back out, threw, threw, threw out a back upside at the Emirates against the Gunners, lost 3 1, totally care. The Carabao Cup is nothing other than a competition for the fringe players for me. So to start the season off, as you can see in the Premier League, it's been you know, all right. It's basically been exactly what I was expecting and what I'm expecting for the most part of this season. Five games in, two wins, two draws and a defeat. Eight points on the ball puts us in 11th place. And yeah, that's basically that. Very mixed start to the campaign. Exactly what we were expecting. So nothing else to show you really. I suppose what I could do is show you that the finances continue to stay at a very nice uh, level here. 25 mil in our current bank balance. So I decided not to sign anyone on deadline day. Obviously, I mentioned it in the last episode. I thought I could possibly bring someone in. But in the end, I thought, you know what? I'm going to leave it. There was a possible chance that I could sell Joe Bryan for like £2 million and then bring in Ryan Niambe, the Blackburn fullback, English-born Namibian. But uh, I decided against it in the end because uh, it would have cost me like 10 £10 million pounds total, uh, well, like £10 million pound loss, if you will, and I thought, you know what, we're fine, like, the squad is fine, man, I'm happy with what we got, no need to make changes, so right now, everyone is fully fit, and that's the one thing I'm noticing in this year's FM as well, is it just me, or are injuries quite rare? Now, I know I'm tempting fate by saying that pre-game, but it just seems like I've been very fortunate with injuries so far this FM. Maybe it's an FM thing. Maybe I'm just getting very lucky. But 4 2 3 one control possession for Burnley at home. This is our team. Rodex in goal, but for his Robinson, Tossin, Jerome and Connor with Lamina and Zamba through the middle. Caballero knock out the inside forwards and Kenny supports the man of the moment. Patrick Bamford, four goals in five games to start the season off. 
I kind of downplayed his arrival at the start of the season. i got to say, I'm very happy I spent the money thus far. On the bench, Darlow, Mings, Walker, Peters, Gagliardini, Cook, Reed, and Mitrich as well. First of two, it's Burnley at home. Let's get back to winning ways after back-to-back -back losses. Come on, Fulham. <laughs> Burnley have got rid of... Oh, I forgot to do the 2D. <laughs> you saw the boys coming out the tunnel. Burnley have got rid of Sean Dyche, by the way. They've got Petkovic, uh, the former Switzerland manager, in charge of them now. Um, so he might possibly give them a new club identity. Who knows? But uh, Oh, wow, no way. Speaking of Niambe, he's gone to Burnley. How much did they pick him up for? Because you know, I could have signed him for about 12 to 14 million and sold Joe Bryan for around two. But interesting, Burnley have picked him up. He's got some fantastic stats, I'll tell you that much. So I guess I probably should have done that, really. But in the end, opted against it. And will that decision come back to haunt me in this very game here? As Ashley Barnes is denied by Marek Rodak, who picks up the loose ball. Niambe has got some absolutely brilliant physical and mental stats. He's not the best technically, but physically he's absolutely superb. And again, mentally, great determination, great work rate. I kind of regret it, to be honest. And here he's on the ball, getting an assist for the opening goal of the game. Yep, that's my regret for the summer transfer window. Could have sold Joe Bryan, could have bought him with Niambe. I know it's a different side of the fullback, left to right, but he's got some brilliant stats, and I kind of regret not pulling the trigger on that deal. Niambe beats Robinson, whips it across the centre, and there's Ashley Barnes from two yards out. He's not going to miss. 1-0 Burnley. It's okay, it's all right. Plenty of time to go as Lamina picks up that loose ball and finds Tom Kearney. Sent through. Bamford. Oh, oh, he's, oh, he's just brilliant. Patrick Bamford, two bikes to the cherry and gobbles it up at the second attempt. And the former lead striker has scored five goals in as many games. Every game he started for us, he's bagged a goal and he's done it once again. A little bit lucky, I'll be honest here, with a deflection coming straight back to him. But we'll take it. Bottom corner, Patrick Bamford's on fire. So, so happy with the start he's made. And I'm telling you, those mental stats are definitely helping with a resilient personality. That's for sure. So, 1-1 one, one here. You know, if we are to be a top 10 team, and I know we finished in 10th last season, these are the games at home against teams that we should be beating. We must win. That's why I was so frustrated with 1-1 one, one draw at home to Swansea on the opening day. If we're to stay in the top 10, and that is so difficult in a very competitive division like this one, We've got to make sure we win our home games, especially against teams that we should be beating. Half an hour to go, still tied at 1-1. Throw, Burnley, 10 minutes on the clock as Ryan has it headed away by Zambo, but straight to Jack O'Connell, and here come the Clarets. Viviani to Frobotta, into Seymour. And now Wood blocks, brilliant block from Tosin. And I'll tell you what, Tosin and Jerome's partnership is absolutely fantastic. Defensively, we've not started off as good as last year, but they are such a brilliant CB duo. And honestly, Tyro Mings, he was like supposed to be our star signing of last season. There's a reason why he only plays half our games of that. Tosin and Jerome are building a brilliant partnership at the back. But Burnley pushing for a late winner here for Botta down left. Which one in? Chris Wood heads over. Still 1-1. I think that is going to do it. And there it is. 1-1 at home to Burnley. Not a bad result, I suppose. And to be honest here, as I say, oh, you're unlucky today. I'm always very lenient on the boys. Even after a game, we probably should win. But to be honest here, again, I, I know I keep repeating this phrase, but it's a marathon and not a sprint. And a point every now and then is not something to be snuffed at. I'll take that, to be fair. Back-to-back -back losses, a 1-1 draw. And again, I, I, I said it before, the only thing that matters to me is we just stay clear of here. If we stay clear of the bottom three, remain, uh, remain in the Premier League, become an established Premier League team, we'll gain reputation season by season, the bank balance goes up season by season, Take your time. Take your time. Slow and steady. So moving on, Arsenal away. High flying start the campaign off. Second place and a win here at the Emirates for them will take them top. They've actually been doing really well um, since the save began. Arteta's got them firing on all cylinders right now and uh, looking like genuine title contenders. They were last year and it could be again this year as well. So it is the game. Uh, as you can see, a couple of changes to our lineup, but we'll stay with a 4 2 3 1. Now again, normally I do the gig and press against the big teams away. But this time we're going to stick with the control possession. And we'll have Rodick in goal. Back four of Robinson. Tyrone coming in alongside Jerome and Kyle Walker Peters at right back. Lewis Cook comes in to play alongside Zambo. Caballero and Noka are on the wings once again, though, with Kenny supporting Patrick Bamford up top. Can he make it six straight as he chases that Jamie Vardy record? Doubt to be, you never know. Uh, Darlow, Adarabayo, Roberts, Gagliadini, Lamina, Reed, and Mitrovic are our bench. Second and final game. It's Arsenal away. Can't see us getting much. We never really do against the big teams, but you never know. Come on for them. Obviously, last year we had those absolutely bizarre victories towards the end of the season against Manchester United and then Chelsea away at Stamford Bridge. 
that that win for us over Solskjaer side basically cost them the title last year because had they won that game and then won their remaining ones, they would have mathematically won it. So we we kind of helped Liverpool win the title last year. Solskjaer side, whenever we face them next, they are going to put like seven goals past us in the first half to get their revenge. Anyway, first time it falls into the gun as Kyle Walker Peters loses out to Tagliafico down the left, plays the one two off KWP, and the gunners keep the chance alive. Kieran Tierney looking for space, brilliant ball through, and Smith Rowe hits the post and then deflects off Rodak and goes behind. Goal kick though, offside flag was raised. Sorry, free kick offside flag was raised. Thing is, even though we've not picked up many points against the big teams at all since the save began, and we've only had two victories in the two seasons we've had, we genuinely, ordinarily, do give a really good account of ourselves. So even if we lose, it's normally only by a Zayak hits the post. One, possibly two goals. Um, obviously, I know we've had some drubbings, like 5-0, and then obviously 8-0 away at Anfield back in Season 1. But to be fair, normally, again, if we do lose as well, it's often in really heartbreaking fashion, like it was against Arsenal last season as well. 0-0 at half-time, and this is what I mean. We don't play badly against the big teams. We give a good account of ourselves. It's all you can really ask of your team in the first few seasons. Like, when you're doing an RTG... You, you, you don't expect to beat the big teams, you know, every time you face them. You don't expect to beat them half the times or even a quarter of the times you face them. You just think, so long as you play all right and, and put up a battle, then that's fair enough. That's all you can ask, really. And we'd be doing it here again at the Emirates. 15 minutes to go. What a point this would be. Fuck's sake. Late goals. Not again. Not again. Header just off target. 10 minutes to go. A couple of tired legs out there. Going to take off Tom Kearney for... Gagliardini, and what we're going to do here is swap those two roles around and actually swap Zambo around as well because he's on a booking, don't like a booking on a ball winning midfielder. And I think I might take up Caviero for Bobby Reed as well down the left hand side. He's always got bags of energy. Eight minutes to go, almost there. Come on, come on, come on. Lamina for Zambo just to burn a bit of clock, I think. And we are almost there as we enter the final two minutes. And I will take that every day of the week. Clean sheet at the Emirates Stadium and a good point as well. Done, lads. You just proved a lot of people wrong there before by avoiding defeat. And there it is. 0-0 no, no against Arsenal. And again, <laughs> I know a goal is isn't the sort of thing that normally an FM player will be excited about. But I definitely am. We give a good battle against the big teams when we face them. That's a very credible point right there. And again, slow and steady. Long way to go. But good positives for sure in these sort of games, and I'll take them every day of the week. And that was today's episode of the FM Save, guys. We thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed it, and if you have done, please drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And what we'll do is we'll come out the final two games before the World Cup begins. Norwich away at Carrow Road. Big game there if we go into a bit of a struggle in these final four games. And then West Ham at home as well. Possibly battling for a top ten place just like last season. Have a great day, guys. Much love to you all. And I'll see you for the next episode of the FM Save as we get ready for the World Cup in Qatar 2022. Very soon.